We're in Bournemouth for Inside Out. Last year, they generated more than 175,000 complaints, cold calls. But are companies in the South cashing in on people's misery? Disgusted. I paid for something which was no good and I was never able to use. What you write on your website yeah. is wrong. It technically is, is it's wrong. It's wrong. But we've never held There's that. There's no technical as... about it. It's wrong. I'm John Cuthill and this is Inside Out for the South of England. So, there's going to be a crackdown on cold calling. The government has recently announced that companies who make nuisance phone calls face tougher regulations. But if someone approaches you and says that they can stop all that unwanted attention for a fee, you might be tempted to sign up. I've been meeting some people who did, who came to regret it. Hello? This is Maureen Taylor. Maureen is fed up with receiving calls. Hello. A lot of calls. Hello. And this is Stephen Hall. Stephen is fed up with making calls. A lot of calls. Both have one thing in common. Cold calls. <laughs> but one call in particular got their attention. One afternoon, I was at home on my own, and uh, the phone went, and I just answered the phone, and the chap said to me, do you have unwanted calls? And, yes, some. Um, why? You know, he said, well, we're working in conjunction with BT, bringing out a new, I can't work, gizmo, I call it, a thing, you know, which are going to stop all these calls. And that, that, of course, I think, oh, BT, stop the calls. Oh, that just sounds interesting. They rang me and said that they understood I had been getting a lot of nuisance calls, which I acknowledged, and I did ask them how they knew, and they said that they had equipment that could find out this kind of thing. Both calls came from the Telecom Protection Service. That's the Telecom Protection Service, not the Telephone Preference Service, or TPS. Same initials, but very different companies. What did they offer? What did they tell you that they could do? They said they would send um, a, a machine, which was a small machine, which would be attached by lead to the main line phone. And when I had a nuisance call come through, that would block it. They wanted £80, or £79.99 to be exact. So I thought, right, I might as well go for it. So, 80 quid lighter, Moyne and Stephen both signed up to the Telecom Protection Service, not the Telephone Preference Service, which is free and backed by Ofcom. The Telephone Preference Service, or the TPS, is the UK's official opt-out register. Uh, it's a free service and anybody can register their telephone number, whether it's a landline or a mobile. And once it's been registered with us uh, for 28 days, it's then a legal requirement for any company making outbound sales and marketing calls to screen their lists against the TPS before making those calls. Just to be clear, the Telephone Preference Service, the UK's official opt-out register, doesn't cold call. Ah, but the Telecom Protection Service, the one that phoned Maureen and Stephen, does. Yes, but the Telephone Preference Service doesn't charge. However, the Telecom Protection Service does. For a one-off payment, the Telecom Protection Service claims it'll add your phone number to their own industry-circulated list to stop cold calls. It also sends customers a call blocker, a device to plug into their landline which it claims will stop unwanted calls. Money back guaranteed if it's returned within seven days of receiving it. Useful for Stephen. When he couldn't get in touch with the company after he'd paid his money, he decided to send it straight back. The package arrived in a jiffy bag. Um, we just opened the jiffy bag, saw what it was inside. It was in a, in a box inside the jiffy bag. Uh, so we just put it back in the jiffy bag, resealed it, found an address and sent it back, recorded delivery and didn't even open the box. When Maureen's blocker arrived, the cold calls stopped, but so did everything else. It blocked the phone completely. I couldn't get out. There was no dialing tone. 
and, and nobody could make an incoming call because my neighbour over the road tried to do that. Call blockers can help reduce nuisance calls if used correctly. Prices start from about 20 quid and they're designed to monitor and block unwanted attention. Which is funny because attention was exactly what Maureen and Stephen wanted. Remember that seven day money back promise? We must have run two or three times a week at least, which is sort of 30 odd times. Sometimes you'd get somebody to answer the phone and they say there's nobody here, can't deal with your business. So a few days later I rang again and she said, oh, he was very busy. And uh, I said, well, it seems that I'm being fobbed off here. It's not only Maureen and Stephen who've been left feeling like they've been given the runaround. We've heard from other telecom protection service customers struggling to get their money back. I've come to Bournemouth, where the company is based. First up, the name. Same initials as the telephone preference service. Coincidence? Um, to be fair, we haven't really done it to pass off as them. We've done it so as people would associate the product with what we're trying to do, with the service that we're trying to provide, which is blocking calls. Some of your sales staff have been claiming that you're affiliated with or working in conjunction with BT. Is that the case? No. Um, so why are they doing it? What, why are they saying that? The fact of it is, basically, we may have had one or two that we've actually caught out who have said that. We've got recorded calls within our call centres. We've caught out the ones that have actually said, you know, that we've caught out doing that kind of thing, saying that they are BT. That's misrepresentation of our company. We've so never ever ever from your company. We, we have caught said and they've been dealt with they've and, been and with BT. Yeah, they've been dealt with and sacked. When it's when it's been come up that, that that's actually happened, they've been put out the door. The mention of BT was was the thing that made me if they hadn't mentioned BT, I don't think I would have had anything to do with it. I think the fact that they said they were representing or in, you know collusion with or something with BT was what made me interested in it at all. Telecom Protection Service Limited is one of a number of companies that have sprung up offering solutions to cold calls but at a price. For trading standards, the irony of an industry making nuisance calls in order to stop people receiving nuisance calls isn't lost. Quite often consumers are approached, you know, buy a cold call and a lot of the people I've spoken to, um, they're already registered with the telephone preference service. So straight away um, these companies are flouting the law. Quite often they oversell the product, they make claims they can't substantiate, they may claim that they're working with BT and Ofcom, which uh, the people I've spoken to is not true. They may say they can block all nuisance calls, which is impossible. Some of these companies say they add your phone number to their own lists, which they claim will help cut cold calls. Do direct marketing companies take any notice of these sort of third party lists? No, they don't. They're not recognised at all. The lists that they give out are really superfluous. The only list that most direct marketing companies would have any regard to would be the official telephone preference service list. As for the telecom protection service, there's another problem. Their website says customers must return the call blocker within seven days in order to qualify for a refund. That's simply not right. What you write on your website yeah. is wrong. It technically is, is it's wrong. It's wrong. But we've never held There's that There's no technical as... about it. What you write on, in your terms and conditions yeah. is wrong. So okay. why have you got it on your website? Well, that's something that has, you know, is, is something that we have taken out of this because, you know, we have actually stopped trading since you've, you're coming to talk to me now. Um, and the reason being we've stopped trading is because of all the, the sort of stresses that we've had from the media. I mean, there are about 200 odd companies doing what we're doing. Lots of them aren't doing it in the same way that we're doing it and, and are doing it a far lot worse. Obviously, we, there will be a, the odd few cases that you're bringing up that obviously aren't happy with the way that our service was. And, you know, we are sorry to those customers. We, we've never intended to do any, th any harm to them at all. After 12 weeks and more than 30 calls to the telecom protection service, Stephen got his money back. Some people would just go, oh well, that's 80 pounds, that'd be sure. Well, it's a lot of money for a retired person. Maury is still waiting. I haven't had even an apology, let alone a refund. As for Giles Ward Best, well, he's thinking of getting back into the industry. Just one question. How will you get your new customers if you go back into business? More than likely through the phone.
And if you want to talk cold calls, then drop me an email, john.cuthill at bbc.co.uk. Join us again on March the 16th when it's full steam ahead for the Brighton Bell. She's being brought back to life after 40 years on the scrap heap. People cry, literally, when we tell them it really is coming back on the main line and that's where she belongs. <laughs>